Hi, I'm Eric Polsky, and I'm going to take you through a couple of brief demos on how to use Power BI. My background is I'm, I'm a software developer, but I do a lot of work with data. I do a lot of data engineering tasks and data analysis tasks. I've been a data architect, and I'm, I take cor correct ways of displaying data very seriously because it gives us a, an excellent way to help inform our customers about what's going on in their business and in their organization. And there are insights that you can gain by helping them visualize the data in fun and unique ways. So let's take a look at some of the differences between how Power BI works and how Excel works. If what we're trying to do is take some data from Excel and visualize it, often people lay out the data in Excel so that it's already optimized for a specific type of user, but it's difficult to take that data and visualize it the way that it's been entered. We also have some problems where people enter things visually to help them in Excel. For example, we have these blank rows at the top, which is not a big deal when you're just looking at it. But if you wanted to consume this into some other data source, those blank lines can cause us trouble. We also probably would want to look at this data by saying something like Canada for 1999 had this, po this population. Canada for 2000 had this population it wouldn't be quite as easy for me to search or sort or filter by one country. Visually, again, this is very useful, but if we wanna treat this like data, we have some problems. So is it a replacement? No, absolutely not. There are things we can do in Excel very quickly and conveniently in terms of manipulating, cleaning up data, but most importantly, updating and keeping the data up to date. We would definitely wanna do that in something like Excel rather than Power BI. The next big question we have is, are there limitations to Excel in terms of quantity of data, sizing of data? And there are some real issues here that are difficult for us to resolve, especially in older versions of Excel, but Microsoft has been working very hard to improve on this. So one of the first things that they did was they, they took off some of the limitations on how many rows you're allowed to have, how many columns. But if you put enough data into Excel, you start running into some problems. I have an Excel spreadsheet here, and one of these particular tables, this one called Sales Fact, this has an export of a million rows of data. And as you can imagine, opening up something like this in Excel and working with it in Excel can get to be pretty cumbersome. There are some features, though, that you can use in Excel that will help with that, although Power BI is better suited to deal with large quantities of data. One of those features is called Power Pivot. Power Pivot allows us to take large quantities of data and store it using something more like SQL Server's analysis engine. So this can handle much larger quantities of data at a very rapid pace. It also allows us to do slightly more database-centric things like maintain proper data types and maintain relationships between tables. So I can have data in here and I can actually build relationships between those pieces of data and those relationships are honored although it doesn't honor them in the way that a relational database does. It doesn't try to maintain integrity of the data. It's just helping us for our reporting purposes to tie together things that are coming from various places so that we can use them in a single report. But because I have this, Power BI is gonna be able to leverage this really well. So what I wanna show you are some of the ways we can take advantage of what Excel does and how Power BI works and show how them working together can solve some very complicated problems. So complicated problem number one is, what if your data is a mess? Number two is, what if the size is ridiculous? So Power BI has solutions for both of these. Excel has some solutions for both of these. Let me go back to this example of country population data. The first few rows here are blank, and that can cause us some difficulties in importing this data. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna highlight part of the data, and I'm gonna convert it into a table. Now, if you do this, you will now have two different import options for this data. One is sheet one, which you can see at the bottom of the screen. And the other is I can now import this table, which it'll automatically name table one, I believe. And if I want to, I can go into this table design and I can rename it to something more intuitive, like country, oops, can't have spaces in there, country pop for country population. So what I've just done is I've told this data that it is a relevant, important thing separate from the sheet itself, and that'll make it easier for me to import my Excel data. So let's take a look at this in Power BI now. 
I'm gonna save this with a slightly different name so I don't overwrite the one that already exists. I'll call this country population by year tables and make sure it's going in the right place. All right. So let's start by pulling in the simplest best version, which is the one I just converted to a table. We've got a get data button over here, but I'm gonna use the Excel one that they've given us because it's convenient and the data I'm pulling in is from Excel. And I'm gonna come in here and tell it I want my Power BI data. And this particular one is from here. And there's the one I just saved, country population by year tables. So normally I would have only gotten one option, sheet one. But because I highlighted that data and I told it that it's a table and I named the table, I can now tell it I want that. And notice it's got the headers already figured out. It's got the columns already figured out. If I tell it instead that I want sheet one, it's pulling in the entire sheet, including those extra rows at the top, which also means that it's gonna get the column names wrong and it's gonna mess up the data types because it doesn't know what's going on with those data types. So let's do it this easy way first and see how easy that is to work with. Count to 10 and it's pulling in my data and I should be able to look at it right away. So there's the data. It's been imported, piece of cake. Let's try it a slightly harder way now. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna pull it in using sheet one. So I'm not gonna use that table feature I just showed you. And we're gonna see a problem right away. Come on now. So the column headings are not very helpful. The first rows of data are not very helpful and the data types that it decided it should use for these are kind of messed up because it's using rows that contain data that aren't relevant. So Power BI is okay with this. We just need to give some additional work into the system to tell it how to handle it. So to do this, I'm gonna use this transform data button. And if you're using an older version of Power BI, this says edit instead of transform. And this actually opens up a completely different interface now. This interface is called the Power Query Editor. And the Power Query Editor uses a slightly different syntax. So in, in Power BI, we're using DAX. This is using Power Query Editor language, a slightly different syntax for how it works. But there are some really neat advantages to this editing interface. One of them is each of the things it does, it stores as a separate step in the import process. It scripts those things, and you can look at that script if you want to. View, Advanced Editor will let you see the script. This script is run in the order that you see every single time you refresh the data. So the beauty here is if your data has some issues and you go through and spend the time in here to clean it up, next time when people have made additional changes to that Excel, they've added additional rows, we can re-import it and rerun through all of those steps without having to clean up the data in Excel. We can allow Power BI to do it in an automated fashion. But it made some mistakes here. It determined that these were the headers and these are not the headers. The header should be this row four. It also assumed some data types incorrectly and I need to fix those two things. So it scripted those two steps and I'm gonna remove those two steps. I'm gonna say, I don't want you to assume the data types right now and I don't want you to promote those as the headers right now because first what I wanna do is remove these first four rows. They're kind of in my way. So I'm gonna tell it to remove the top four rows And now my first row is actually the correct one to be my headers. And it scripted the removing of those rows. I can now tell that I wanted to use the first row as headers. It added another step for promoting the headers. And then once it had the headers, it decided to help me out again and automate the creation of data types for the values inside. And it seems like it got these right. The one, two, three indicates that it's using a numeric field for these. ABC indicates that it's using text data for these. So we've got some really interesting ways now to pull in data that's not in a perfect shape or form for our uses, because Excel users often will do things to make it more convenient for them. Another thing that would be, make this more convenient for me though, would be if every single year was actually a column, so that I have Canada, 
1999 and the population. Canada, again, 2000 in the population. Turn this into some, so what I wanna do is the opposite of a pivot table. I wanna unpivot this data. And we have a ton of transformations available to us for changing data that we get. And it doesn't have to be from Excel. This could be from a database or from a CSV file or JSON or XML data. But what I wanna do right now is unpivot these years. So I'm gonna come in here and use the transform button and tell it to unpivot those columns. How does it know which ones to unpivot? Well, let me show you an even cooler trick. You can select the column that you do not want it to pivot and tell it to unpivot all the other columns automatically. So there are a bunch of these transformations available to us to simplify tasks that we often have to do that are com complex. If I don't like the name attribute for this, I can just rename it and watch on the right side when I hit enter, it added another step. I can come over here and rename this. It actually adds it to the same step because multiple renames doesn't need multiple steps for that. So I'll call this one population. What I now have is a step-by-step -step transformation of data. I can roll back in time each of the previous transformation steps. And I am converting some messed up Excel into something that's very usable. And I'm doing it in a way that is completely reproducible in the future. Now that I'm done, I can tell it that I'd like to apply those changes and it will rerun that import process running through that script to transform it as it goes. So that is now what my data looks like.